I've heard some people say that our universe and our planet are so perfectly suited to supporting intelligent life that this must prove that there is a creator. I'd like to share another way of looking at our situation that can account for the amazing circumstances we find ourselves in without suggesting a creator. I'm going to use this deck of cards to help explain my reasoning. Let's imagine that every hand of four cards drawn from this deck represents a different planet. In our deck of possible planets, only one type, four aces, is capable of supporting intelligent life. Now I'm shuffling this deck, and I'm going to draw a planet for us to try to live on. Would you be surprised if the first hand I drew was four aces? Huh, I didn't get four aces. Well, that's too bad. We can't survive on this planet. But if we can't survive on the planet, we're not around to notice that we can't survive. Let's try a thought experiment. Say that I put you into a dreamless, medically induced coma, and sit by your bed shuffling this deck and drawing cards all day, every day. As soon as I draw four aces, I'll wake you up, but no sooner. When you wake up, will you be surprised to see me holding four aces? Well, of course not. The only way you'll be awake to see anything is if I've drawn four aces. And yet it could have taken days or months, for all you know, of constant shuffling for me to finally get that hand. No matter what the probability of drawing the four aces is, the probability of you seeing them when you wake up is one. This is because your observation is tied to the outcome. You can only see what cards I've drawn when I draw the four aces and wake you up. The same reasoning applies to planets. A life form can only observe the kind of planet it's on after having developed on it, so none will ever find itself on a planet that's hostile to life. This concept is known as the Anthropic Principle. So really, we shouldn't be surprised to find ourselves on a planet like Earth, which seems perfectly suited to our needs. Even if there is only one planet like Earth in the entire universe, that's where life would develop. And sitting among the billions of other lifeless planets that weren't suitable, it would think, wow, what a perfect planet I'm on. This leads us to a different question that I think is actually more interesting. How special is the Earth itself? In the deck analogy, how likely is it to draw those four aces? We can imagine having drawn this hand, where the Earth would be closer to the Sun and too hot for life to develop, like Venus. Or this hand, where the Earth would be further from the Sun and too cold, like Mars. It could even have been a gas planet with no solid ground at all, like Jupiter or Saturn. By looking around us, we can see examples of other planets and get some idea of what kinds of cards are in our deck. Based on our current understanding, there are at least two billion planets in our galaxy that have liquid water on them and orbit at a habitable distance from their suns. Since there are about 100 billion planets in our galaxy total, that works out to a roughly 2% habitable planet rate. In our deck of cards analogy, this is like trying to draw 4 aces from a deck with 21 aces in it, where nearly half the cards in the deck are aces. Okay, so it's possible that the Earth isn't quite so special after all. But what about the universe itself? We could imagine gravity being stronger and crushing even the smallest planets to black holes or being weaker and never pulling matter together into stars and planets in the first place. How special is our universe? Well, when thinking about different planets, we could look around and see examples to figure out what was possible. We can't do that for universes, though. Because by definition, even if there are others, we'll never be able to observe any of them except for our own. It's like we can see that we drew four aces from the possible universes deck, but we can never see any of the other cards we might have drawn. Maybe imagining a universe with stronger gravity is a fundamental misunderstanding of the rules, like imagining a hand with a blue square B card instead of this red diamond A card. Going back to planets, someone who doesn't understand how they form might imagine that the Earth could have been a big cube instead of a ball. Well, we know that even if the Earth somehow ended up cube-shaped, the force of its own gravity would soon pull it back into a ball. So this person might be amazed that the Earth is round rather than any of a million other shapes they can imagine, when in reality all planets are basically round, and this is nothing special. Without understanding the underlying rules of our universe, we can't be sure that the different possibilities we're imagining are actually possible. We may someday come to understand that the fundamental forces are intimately linked, or even that they're just different aspects of a single phenomenon. In these cases, it wouldn't make sense to imagine any one of them having a different strength. So from what we currently know, planets like the Earth may not be all that rare, and regardless, the fact that we're alive at all means that we must be on one that suits our needs well. We can see plenty of planets that aren't suitable for life, like Mars or Venus, but of course, no life has developed there to notice how unpleasant the conditions are. As for the universe itself, it's very hard to figure out how else things could actually be. Without a solid understanding of why things are the way they are, we can't be sure that we're not just extending patterns in ways that don't make sense, like imagining drawing a blue square B card instead of an ace of diamonds. 
So I hope I've shown you a different way of thinking which can make sense of our circumstances without necessarily invoking a creator. If you found this interesting, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for listening.